All right, boys, we're here. Anyone inside? 53 County. Number police department with the first one. Do you cover the door with your hands up? So nobody else is in the house, man? No, nobody else is in the house. I mean, I see stuff like this on the movie, but I didn't think it would ever happen. <laughs> well, we knew you were a star, so we were going to make you a movie star today. <laughs>
One officer can be heard asking the other whether he ran Ruby's son's criminal history. He could be a criminal, even though he doesn't reside at the residence. Everyone knows that in minority neighborhoods, they use sweet, innocent grandmas to fence stolen property. Do they, is her son, like, if they run him, and is he a criminal? No, I don't better know. way to put it? I don't know. Miss Johnson, mm -hmm. did you have any uh, grandkids over recently? Do I have, did I have any Yeah, grandkids? like maybe yesterday? Oh, no. No? No. Okay. So how did they end up there? It all started with a vehicle being stolen from a hotel. The day before the raid, a 2007 white Chevy truck with a Texas license plate was stolen from a downtown Denver hotel parking garage. The driver rammed it through the gate and fled. Inside was $4,000 cash, two drones, and an iPhone 11. Hours later, the hotel notified the guest who owned the truck, and he began tracking the iPhone via the Find My iPhone app. The app supposedly led to Ruby Johnson's home before it disappeared. Based solely on that, Denver Police Department obtained a search warrant. They chose not to conduct any surveillance or conduct any other investigation at the location. They didn't even bother to drive by the house to see if the stolen truck was there, or maybe even next door. Nor did they even bother to even go perform one of their beloved knock and talks at the actual location where the phone pinged. Instead, they activated the SWAT team. Just to be safe, of course, it is a minority neighborhood after all. About a dozen Denver SWAT officers poured into the home. They sifted through boxes with the help of the canine unit. They used a battering ram to try to open the rear garage door. It's, it's clear. They broke down the attic door. They also cut the lock to her shed. Officer Montoya, the head stormtrooper, in an interview with Channel 9 News, said that the officers researched the property ahead of time and knew that 77-year-old Ruby Johnson lived at the home alone, which is why they used what he called the lowest threshold of aggression. If this SWAT team, along with an armored vehicle, is their lowest threshold of aggression, I'd say that their higher thresholds must involve those newfangled exploding robots. Officer Montoya, like a good government trooper, was just following orders, though. They're just doing what good stormtroopers do. It's up to the prosecutors and judges to stop them, according to them. They have no minds of their own. Here's what he said. I'm not going to second guess the investigation, he said. The proper steps were taken. The place where that would have been questioned would have been the DA's office and the judge's level, and they felt comfortable signing that warrant. So what about them? Denver Deputy District Attorney Ashley Beck and Judge Beth Farragher both approved the warrant. 
Kristen Wood, a spokesperson for the Denver County Court, said Judge Farragher signed the search warrant because she found probable cause existed. If a judge did not find probable cause, he or she would not sign the search warrant. Prosecutor Beck also would not comment directly to the news when they called. Instead, a spokesperson wrote in an email that the warrant passed legal muster. Quote, I can tell you that our office is obligated to review every search warrant the Denver Police Department writes to ensure it's legally sufficient based on the facts the detective swears. So, at least through their spokespersons, the officers blame the judge and the prosecutor. The judge blames the prosecutor and the officers, and the prosecutor blames the officers and the judge. This is perfectly representative of the efficiency and the incompetency of your government. This is why the DMV runs so smoothly and is your favorite place to visit. It's true, though, that there are two important things to look at when reviewing warrants. One, the information provided by law enforcement under oath to the judge reviewing the allegations for probable cause. And number two, whether those allegations are sufficient to compromise probable cause for the issuance of the warrant. Looking at the actual search warrant application completed by Detective Gary Staub, it appears that he relied solely on representations made to him by the owner of the stolen items and did absolutely nothing himself. He notes in the application to the judge that the owner of the vehicle that was stolen told him that the iPhone pinged to the house and that he drove by the owner to the location in a rented vehicle, but he did not see the stolen truck there. However, the application notes, theoretically, the stolen phone could be inside the closed garage at the residence. Also theoretically, which the detective notes in his copy and paste warrant, his vast experience tells him that stolen items can be removed from a stolen vehicle and theoretically placed in a garage. That's pretty much it. He includes a copy of the owner's Find My iPhone screenshot and the owner's photos of Ms. Johnson's residence. The detective did nothing himself. Instead of actually going and knocking on the door, talking to people, you know, detective work, let's just activate the SWAT team and bust down the door. It's a black neighborhood after all. Guns were stolen along with the vehicle. Therefore, we have potentially black people with guns. Better bring the armored vehicle as well. So yes, she's a 77-year-old grandmother with no criminal history apparently, but you never know. Officers have to make it home that night. As officers searched her home, Ruby Johnson waited in the back of a police car, and she told the Channel 9 News afterwards that the experience was traumatizing and led her to feel unsafe in her own home that she'd lived in for about 40 years. Quote, when I start thinking about it, tears start coming down, she said. Ruby's longtime friends have noticed a sadness that they hadn't seen before. They don't see her smile anymore. Officer Joe Montoya, Division Chief of Investigations, said that the department did not intend to harm Ms. Johnson and he regrets that the warrant caused her to suffer. We can always apologize and I'd be willing to apologize that there was a warrant issued and evidence was not found there, Montoya said. That's a given, but I don't think there was anything done to intentionally traumatize her. And they just don't get it, do they? They chose to obtain a search warrant and send a SWAT team there. They knew that the only person who lived there was a 77-year-old woman who was a law-abiding citizen. Yet they sent a SWAT team there first, instead of treating the woman as Officer Montoya no doubt would want his own grandmother treated. They chose to traumatize her because they think only of themselves. Officer safety is the only thing that matters to them. By the way, the stolen truck was later recovered two days after the warrant was executed about six miles away in Aurora. The stolen guns were not in the truck, of course, no arrests have been made. The point here is that this is a prime example of the fact that police and government misconduct can happen to you, even if you've done nothing wrong. And this was all done lawfully. Valid search warrant, valid search, innocent victim, wrong house, no, no stolen items found at all. This will continue to happen because police officers are not held accountable for their actions. Prosecutors are not held accountable for their actions. And judges certainly certainly aren't accountable for their actions. I can guarantee you that these things would stop happening if qualified immunity was abolished. But as it is now, they just don't care because there are no consequences. The only thing that we can do at this point is expose what they've done. So spread the message. As always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe and help the channel continue to educate people about their constitutional rights and about civil rights violations that occur across our country. Let me know in the comments uh, who you think is more at fault here. The detective, the prosecutor, the judge, the SWAT team officers. Remember, freedom is scary. Deal with it. I'll see you next time.